Hi, welcome to our session on the social sciences that will help you register for courses in the social science areas. My name is Lee Thompson. I'm professor and chair of the Department of Psychological Sciences. I'm Karen Beckwith. I'm the Flora Stone Mather professor in the Department of Political Science, and I'm the incoming chair of political science. In this video, we're going to give you a broad overview of the different areas of social science that you might be interested in exploring at Case Western Reserve University. Before we begin telling you about some of the requirements for the social science majors that you might be interested in to help you figure out what courses you might want to register for this first semester, I want to reassure you that the social science majors are really very flexible and there's a lot of room for you to explore uh, different areas through taking different courses. So I don't want you to worry too much about making sure that your schedule is absolutely perfect. And in addition, you'll have plenty of time um, once you arrive here on campus in August to make adjustments to your schedule. There'll be people here to help you in the Office of Undergraduate Studies and you'll have your first year advisor who you will meet fairly quickly when you arrive on campus. Before we start talking about specific major requirements, I'm going to ask Professor Beckwith to give you a big picture um, of what we're going to be covering tonight. So the big picture um, has to do with the eight uh, departments representing disciplines in the social sciences, um, two of which are not um, uh, limited as disciplines, but rather one of which is interdisciplinary and another of which is transdisciplinary, about which more later. These um, uh, departments are anthropology, cognitive science, communication sciences, economics, international studies, political science, psychology, and sociology, um, all of which offer really interesting courses and also very strong um, and compelling major fields of study. As you can see from the slide, here are the departments and programs listed. Um, as well as the contact faculty member um, uh, uh, whom you can access, again, as Professor Thompson said, either by email or directly once you get on campus. Um, their office um, is indicated in terms of location. Their phone numbers and emails are also on this slide. Please feel free to contact any of these persons listed, including myself, because this is our responsibility to help you understand how to register for courses in the social sciences. And the social sciences um, have um, uh, a wide range of offerings as well as um, uh, a minimal range of requirements. So the social sciences um, offer courses that are both easily accessed and are not so rigid that it makes it difficult to take them. So we have um, considerable flexibility in regard to the number of courses that one has to take, the number of introductory courses that might be required, and the sequence within which courses might take place. And so um, these are courses then that um, uh, almost all students at Case Western Reserve University University will access at one point um, or another. Um, so when you think about registering and putting together your first seminar and the various SAGES um, requirements and other general education requirements, the social sciences, which are part of that, um, will fit fairly easily um, into this. Um, again, most of these majors and even the courses themselves are not so highly regi regimented um, that students can't get into them. In fact, they're accessed to courses fairly easily. And these majors, all eight of them, fit fairly well with other majors on campus, including ones that might be more demanding in terms of this sequence. And again, social sciences, um, both in terms of majors and minor fields of studies, can be relatively easily combined. And so, Professor um, Thompson, shall we start talking about these various majors? Yes, why don't we begin <laughs> with anthropology? All right, let's go. Okay, so in this slide, you can see the required courses and recommendations for students interested in majoring in anthropology. As a student in the anthropology program, you'll be involved in a discipline that challenges you to form a unique perspective on human behavior, institutions, and biology. And you'll be prepared for a wide range of careers from health and international affairs to public service, education and law, to management and industry, job opportunities in the sub-disciplines of cultural anthropology, biological anthropology, archaeological anthropology, and linguistic anthropology will be abundant in the next 10 years. Examples of opportunities open to anthropologists include working with local police forensic departments, studying health issues for hospitals or medical centers, and consulting for companies that develop software and electronics. Geographic regions for employment opportunities include Latin America, Asia, the Middle East, and North America. 
our particular department of anthropology is, is a recognized leader in the field of medical anthropology with a strong emphasis in global health, and it aims to train scholars to meet the challenges of the increasingly globalized world. What you should note about the anthropology major is that you have uh, options in terms of concentrations that you focus on, and those options include general anthropology, medical anthropology, archaeology, and physical anthropology. Um, each one uh, targets a specific area of the field. There's also a minor in anthropology that is 15 credits, and you would take Anthropology 102-103, a geographic area course, and two approved physical anthropology electives. So now Professor Beckwith will talk about economics. The economics major um, is a good fit for students that have a broad range of interests um, in the social sciences and also um, simply in economics. Students learn about how the economy functions, they learn about public policy and the impact of public policy on firms and on people on human behavior in regard to economics. Economists study human decision making, strategy, innovation, health, the environment and climate change. Five for, uh, core courses are required for this major. Uh, introduction to microeconomics, introduction to macroeconomics, an intermediate macroeconomic course, and then a choice of um, one of two intermediate microeconomic courses, as well as a course in econometrics. Um, for students um, organizing um, uh, a major in economics, keeping in mind that students who don't major in economics can also take these courses. Organizing a major, students will take those five core courses and an additional five um, electives that allow the students um, to specialize in their particular areas of interest. Um, it's a good idea to start with 102 and 103 because they're the prerequisites for almost all additional economics courses. Um, it's also a good idea to move through these courses in sequence. And in this regard, economics is a little more structured than some of the other um, disciplines in the social sciences. Um, in all of the social sciences, but also in economics, taking statistics early on is recommended. It's a good idea. And calculus, too, is also recommended um, for this um, particular major. Graduates in, um, with a major in economics um, end up taking jobs in finance, in government, in nonprofit areas, in startup firms, um, and in healthcare institutions, including hospitals. So, Lee, what's next? Cognitive science. Yes, cognitive science. Um, cognitive science is a trans disciplinary study of the human mind. And our Department of Cognitive Science at Case Western Reserve University is truly unique with its focus on human higher order cognition. In particular, our remarkably sophisticated capacities for creativity, innovation, consciousness, social cognition, and empathy. These are uh, the uh, areas of focus that our department has. Uh, the department um, makes use of the traditional methods of neuroscience, linguistics, psychology, philosophy, biology, and anthropology, along with new integrated methods that have been invented within cognitive science over the last several years. As you can see, there are a series of required courses, um, and there's flexibility in the order in which you take them. So you would want to start with either COGS 101 or 102, um, and then you can uh, also add on COGS 201 and 206, and in the spring, 202. So while COGS 101 is not a prerequisite for COGS 202, you may want to take COGS 101 first. In addition, you'll see that a statistics course is also required for cognitive science, as it is for uh, most of the social science majors. And um, you would take an additional five approved courses that you would decide on with your major advisor once you declare the major in cognitive science. So next up, Professor Beckwith is going to talk about international studies. So the international studies major, um, like cognitive science, is one of those majors that is not focused on a single discipline, but rather involves um, multiple disciplines and taking courses in multiple departments. The international studies major has four foundational courses um, that provide students with the analytical tools and skills necessary to analyze and examine global issues. These courses are in anthropology, economics, history, and political science. 
Um, and you can see the required courses on this slide listed for those departments. Anthropology 102, Economics 103, which is the intro to macroeconomics, an introductory course in history, modern world history, and then political science, the international relations introductory course. So students take those four courses, and then they move from there to choose an area of the world on which to focus. And the areas of the world that are included in the international studies major are Africa, Asia, Europe, Latin America, or the Middle East and North Africa. Um, so students then, um, in uh, selecting an area focus, then also um, select a theme or topical focus, such as international security and, and diplomacy, uh, the global environment, international development, global health, or international business. And so there are required courses, an area um, specialty, and then also a topical concentration. Now the major, in addition to requiring the four interdisciplinary courses, also requires a language competency um, in foreign language. And this can be met either by completing coursework in a language that you started in high school, developing it further, or beginning a new language at Case Western Reserve University, which many of our students do. Um, in addition, students often um, study outside the country, although this is not a requirement of the international studies um, major. Uh, in international studies, most students actually study abroad twice. They take a short, um, uh, a short program, usually uh, as part of a uh, Case Western Reserve University seminar. Uh, that goes out of the country, and then sometimes they take a seminar uh, of study at another institution uh, in Europe, in Africa, in Asia, uh, in the um, area in which they have an interest. Um, their topical focus in terms of what they're interested in, uh, international diplomacy, for example, generally predicts where their first employment will be after college. And so students that graduate with an international uh, studies major um, who are interested in inter international security often go to work in the government for the State Department. Um, they work on um, uh, they work in think tanks. They work um, those who are interested in international development work often turn to working in nonprofits or working in international agencies promoting human rights or economic development outside the country. It's a structured major, um, but not so structured that you can't enjoy it and take advantage of it. And let me just also say that the international studies major um, requires at its conclusion um, the international studies colloquium in which a student uh, does uh, his or her own um, original topical research. So Professor Thompson, I think this leads us to communication sciences among others. Yes, um, communication sciences at Case Western Reserve University is housed in the Department of Psychological Sciences along with the psychology major. And unlike some other universities, our program focuses on medical aspects of communication sciences. In other words, it's not a program that emphasizes journalism or media as it does in some other universities. The major uh, goal for the communication sciences and disorders major is to prepare students to be admitted into uh, accredited master's programs or PhD programs in speech language pathology or audiology. So it's probably the most regimented major in terms of the social sciences as there are prerequisites for graduate school admission that must be met by completion of the major. And so um, for those of you who might be interested in going into a health profession, the career of a speech language pathologist or audiologist is very promising in that there's a general uh, shortage at the national level of licensed clinicians in these areas. And students who go through the master's level program for speech language pathology or the PhD for audiology, or the uh, doctorate for audiology, I should say, um, are in high demand and secure. Um, very well-paying jobs uh, immediately after they finish their graduate training. At uh, Case Western Reserve University, um, you can see that the major requirements for the Communication Sciences and Disorders uh, program starts with the Intro to Communication Disorders, COSI 109, um, and also an interdisciplinary breadth with Psychology 101 and a Statistics class. There's a variety of other Communication Science courses that don't have prerequisites that you can also take during your first year that give you experience in multicultural communication communications in um, sign language um, and other areas of introductory topics in communication sciences. Um, in addition, you can see that uh, you can use AP credit for some of the requirements, um, in particular psychology or statistics. 
Another great opportunity that we have at Case Western Reserve University is our integrated graduate studies program. And if you know from fairly early on that you want to go on into a master's program in speech language pathology, you can apply at the end of your junior year to be admitted into our master's program so that you spend your senior year taking graduate courses and then you only need one additional year in order to graduate with both your bachelor's and your master's in communication sciences and you are ready then to become a licensed speech language pathologist. So this is a really great opportunity for students who know right off the bat that that is the field that they want to go into. However, there are many students who major in communication sciences who combine it with other majors because they want to go into other health fields. There's a lot of relevant training in terms of working with individuals that have speech language or hearing disorders that's very important for anyone who is going to be working with a wide variety of patient populations. Uh, I think the next major that we want to talk about, Professor Beckwith, is going to talk about political science. So political science is my department. Let me talk a little bit about what political science actually um, is and what political scientists do. So political science, the study of, of political science, exercises the uh, focuses on the exercise of political and government power, broadly understood, encompassing a wide range of behaviors, including community activism, protest and revolution, public opinion, political economy, public policy, international organization, uh, national and international political institutions, um, uh, among many other um, uh, realms of the study of the exercise of power through the state or related to the state. Political science courses in looking at those themes focus on issues of justice, representation, citizen and social equality, state and citizen power, corruption, peace and conflict, and many other issues. So it's an interesting major. And our majors go on to um, very interesting careers in a wide variety of arenas. Um, they're prepared for employment in government, law, international organizations, nonprofit organizations, journalism and business, among others, including international um, firms. And our majors also develop the analytical and communication skills, um, both speaking and writing, that are necessary and beneficial um, in any career. Now, students who major in political science, which is a relatively flexible major, um, take three required courses at the introductory level, uh, Intro to U.S. Politics, Introduction to Comparative Politics, and Introduction to International Relations. And thereafter, they choose from a, a variety of elective courses at the upper division, uh, starting at the 300 level. And so students can move right into those more interesting, more seminar-shaped courses. Um, uh, students take six of those courses to complete the major and also finish with a required departmental capstone where a student writes a paper um, of his or her own particular interest on a topic that he or she has studied across the course of a semester under the direction of, um, of one of our faculty members. And these are very useful documents, not only demonstrating um, that the student is, is skilled in all the ways that he or she has, has been trained to, but also it's a very um, culminating experience that gives students a real sense of themselves and a real sense of their intellectual um, accomplishment. Um, the department has particular strengths, although these are not our only strengths, in the areas of finance and political economy, including international political economy, and also in the areas of protest, rebellion, and revolution. So several of us are interested in that kind of political, um, political endeavor. Um, we also offer many opportunities for our students to gain direct experience in politics um, through local, state, and even international internships, um, some of which are funded through a special program available only to political science majors, which is the Wellman Hill Public Service Internship Grants Program. This is a competitive program for political science majors, and we fund as many as five students every summer to do public service in, uh, internships. Uh, and again, it's competitive among our majors. It's been very successful, and we're coming up to our 10th year now, thanks to a very generous donor. We also have students have opportunity for internships through semester and summer courses at the Washington program in Washington, DC. And so our students often will study there with an associated internship with that work. And then finally, um, this year for the first time, we're going to be offering the opportunity for um, undergraduate funded research with faculty members. So there's a lot that the political science major can do, even though it's not highly structured. We offer a lot of scope um, for students to do work in political science. Um, we have no prerequisites, so courses can be taken in any order, but we do recommend that you start with the intro courses first. We do permit AP credit for intro to U.S. politics and for intro to comparative politics, about which more later. 
um, and you'll see a list of um, recommended courses with some suggestions, and these will be available to you when you come to campus on the fall. Uh, in the fall. The next um, major that we need to talk about is psychology. So Professor Thompson, back to you. <laughs> Thank you. You know, Professor Beckwith, before we go on to psychology, um, I was hoping that maybe you could help students. We've been giving them the big picture about uh, major requirements, but we haven't given them a detailed example of what their first semester schedule, their first year schedule might look like. So um, could you walk a student through a sample of their first year schedule for uh, students interested in political science? This is a really good question and this is really helpful. So thank you for this reminder. So here is a sample first year schedule for political science. Um, keeping in mind that political science is, is relatively easy um, to schedule in terms of a first semester for someone who might be interested in a major or a minor. Um, but also, of course, all of these courses and all of these disciplines are open to any student um, regardless of whether or not he or she wants to major in that particular discipline. For the fall semester, um, we would, of course, have a student placed in first seminar, and that's, that will be added to your schedule after you register, so we don't have to worry about that. And then um, in political science, we would recommend take one of the introductory courses that um, is listed uh, that you've just seen. Um, international relations, comparative politics, and uh, U.S. politics. And then you have two or three additional courses that you can select from. They no, don't need to be in political science, obviously. You can begin to work through the general education requirements. And I'm saying work through and not get them out of the way because these are courses you want to take. These are courses that will make you an educated, um, uh, prepared individual to be a good citizen and a good person in the world. So two or three additional courses of your own choice. It's a good idea to take physical education. It's required at Case Western Reserve University and a good thing too um, and so that's something else to um, begin on uh, uh, once you come to campus. Continuing a foreign language is a good idea. It's always a good idea regardless of your major. It's not a requirement um, uh, in um, any of the majors except for international relations, uh, excuse me, international studies and it's not a requirement of the university but graduating from the university with capacity in foreign language is a good idea. That's why it says on the slide, always a good idea. If you're coming out of high school, and almost all of you will be, with some language training, some foreign language training, go ahead and follow that foreign language training or take the opportunity of our excellent modern language and literature um, department and other departments that offer language training and start a new language. So this is a good time to start it, especially as you're remembering a language that you've already undertaken um, in high school. And then in the spring semester, you'll start on another university seminar as part of the SAGES program. And then again, if you're majoring in political science or you really enjoyed your first course, another introductory course is a good idea. And then it's probably a good idea to take an upper division course at this point. You'll be prepared for it and ready for it. Um, so that might be a good choice. And then again, two additional um, courses of your choice, general education, perhaps you're thinking about psychology, which we'll talk about next, and that there might be a good course there to take. And then again, another component of the phys physical education requirement would be a good idea in the second semester of the first year. We will help you through all of this. Um, it's not terribly complex, and we'll be there to talk to you um, as you may need to have assistance. Professor Thompson. Yes, so let me tell you a little bit about psychology. And psychology is one of the most popular majors on our campus, and it's true nationally. Students are very interested in psychology because it's applicable to many careers. It's the broad study of human behavior. Um, and in our department, we have a wide range of uh, expertise among our faculty, and it's reflected in our course offerings. So the required courses for psychology are really um, fairly flexible in that you must take Psychology 101, which is general psychology, um, and a statistics class that can be taken either within the psychology uh, offerings or in uh, the uh, stat class or an anthropology statistics class. And then you need to take two courses from each of two broad areas. In addition, you'll have four uh, elective psychology courses. Um, psychology 101 is a prerequisite for almost all other classes. Uh, if you come in with AP credit or transfer credit for Psychology 101, I would recommend that you um, perhaps consider taking Child Psychology, uh, Psychology 230 in its place. And um, just as Professor Beckwith walked you through the uh, 
to uh, an example first year schedule for political science students, I'll walk you through a sample first year schedule for psychology. Again, you'll be placed into a first seminar. Um, I would recommend that you take Psychology 101 that first semester, and then two to three additional courses of your choice, as well as the physical education. Now, when you go to look at what's offered in the physical education area, don't worry if um, most of them are full, because you will have an opportunity to add those into your schedule later on. However, I hope that you'll be pleasantly surprised by the breadth of offerings in physical education and that you'll be looking forward to taking those. Um, students often remark to me on how much they enjoy some of them. They include rock climbing, uh, yoga, um, you can take a course in CPR, uh, there's, a lot, there's weight training, there's a wide variety of courses that I think you'll really enjoy. In the second semester, I would recommend for those interested in psychology that you try to take your statistics course and another psychology course of your choice, as well as two additional courses. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that a lot of students who are interested in a career that requires the pre-medical curriculum um, uh, often have a major in the social sciences. And so where you see on this sample schedule two to three additional courses of your choice, if you are uh, trying to fulfill the pre-med curriculum, that will be where you would put your pre-med courses. So there's plenty of room to take the calculus, the biology, the chemistry that you're going to need in that first year for pre-med as well. Now, students who major in psychology at Case Western Reserve University go on to a wide variety of careers, uh, many of which include health professions. They go into law. Some go into business. There's an increasing attention being paid um, in business schools to the science of behavior. And there's the psychology of economics is a popular area. It's a growing area. Um, but uh, many of our students go on to earn graduate degrees in psychology as well. And that could be in an applied area. So for example, they become PhDs in clinical psychology, or they go on in research in experimental psychology, and in particular in the neurosciences. Um, so that's a picture of the psychology major in a nutshell. And I'll have Professor Beckwith tell you a little bit about sociology. So sociology is a field that studies basic human and social processes in the context of the complex realities of a rapidly changing world. Sociologists investigate many important and fascinating questions, especially with the notable increase in diversity in our society and the fast-moving realities of a globalizing world. The breadth of knowledge and perspective provided by majoring in sociology has been looked upon favorably by employers in many fields. Sociologists are trained to study many aspects of social life, issues of peace and war, labor force and corporate downsizing, gender and sexuality, work and family, uh, criminality and mass um, incarceration, education reform, inequality in society, and within institutions like medicine and law. The department encourages interaction between students and faculty by offering many opportunities for individualized study and research. Graduates of sociology, majors in sociology are working in fields such as management and industry, law, the health professions, human resources, social work, and education. And sociology is an excellent preparation also for graduate study in multiple fields. In addition to pursuing doctoral study in sociology, many of the recent graduates um, with majors in sociology are now in graduate school uh, in fields like medicine, law, and in social work. Sociology is um, uh, a major that, again, is relatively flexible. It has three required courses, Introduction uh, to Sociology, Modern Sociological Thought, and Sociological Research Methods, um, as well as the Statistics course, um, either STAT 201 or Psychology 282. And then an additional 18 hours, roughly six courses, are required to complete the major. The Introductory course, 101, is a prerequisite for 300-level courses. Sociology is one of the departments that does not offer AP credit. Like political science, um, it offers a capstone, but unlike political science, it does not require it. Um, and this is um, offered in the fall uh, of the senior year. And so, as um, you can probably figure out by now, in the first year, um, the intro course is probably a good idea, 101. 
Um, because there are no prerequisites for the 200 level courses, there are a variety of courses offered in the fall that might be interesting to you. A course on criminality, the course on dating, marriage, and the family is always a popular course in sociology. Lives in Medicine is a very interesting sociology course, um, among many others. There are four concentrations that one can undertake in sociology. Um, these require, excuse me, there are several concentrations in sociology that require four courses. Um, one is Crime, Law, and Justice. Another focuses on gender work and the family. A third focuses on health, medicine, and aging. And a final one focuses on social inequality. And even as I talk about the sociology major, you can probably hear already how this particular major resonates with the other majors as well. They often overlap in terms of the kinds of things in which um, they focus on, the kinds of preparation they require, and the kinds of opportunities they offer to students who take those courses or who major. Um, uh, in those uh, disciplines. So the intersections with psychology, with economics, with political science, with international um, development and, and globalization, um, uh, all of these majors are very strong majors and they fit together well as double majors. So they're not the only ones that fit together well. Obviously preparation for pre-med, for pre-law, um, we have a lot of students in political science who double major in English, who double major with philosophy, um, among, again, many other fields. And then, of course, we have several who also double major in a foreign language. Um, so these are our um, eight majors in the social sciences. Um, and uh, I can assure you, and I'm sure that Professor Thompson will agree with me, these are um, departments in which undergraduate courses are very well taught. Um, they're popular. They're interesting. Um, this is not high school. Um, this is really, really interesting, fun stuff. And we will take your intellectual development seriously um, as you begin to enter these courses. So, Professor Thompson, where do we go? Yes. Well, <laughs> you know, I think in past years when I've talked to incoming first-year students, um, I can recall several common questions that many students have, and I thought maybe we could address a few of them, um, trying to uh, think about what you all are thinking about while you're watching us. And um, when you were talking about double majors, um, I just want to reiterate that it is a fairly uh, common occurrence for students to double major across areas, but certainly in the social sciences. And one thing that you'll see is that you can, at times, count the same course for more than one major. So the statistics requirement is one great example in that you don't have to take multiple statistics courses if you major in both. Uh, sociology and psychology or cognitive science and communication sciences. You would just take one it would fulfill the requirement in both. Um, or for example communication sciences and psychology both require psychology 101. You would only take that obviously once and it would count for both. Another similarity is the internet introduction to international relations. That's a course that's a requirement for the international studies major but also for the political science major. Mm -hmm. Um, Professor Thompson, I know another question that students have concerns AP credit. So if I were a student coming in with an AP credit in one of the social sciences, what would you advise me to do? Not all social sciences accept AP credit. Sociology does not, for example. Right. Um, right. What would you recommend to a student coming that, in with credit? That is a really excellent question. And I think you have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. There's no one answer that's going to fit all of you. Um, the, the questions that I would ask if uh, it would be, first of all, what is the AP credit for a course that's required for your major or your intended major? And um, if it is, you want to make sure that you are very confident that you've mastered the material in that course. And you also want to consider how long ago it was that you took that AP course. So for example, if you took it during the freshman year of high school, um, enough time has elapsed that you may have not recalled all of the information that was provided. And you might want to consider taking it again. Um, the next point that I want to make is that taking uh, the course at the college level can be fundamentally different and can be a much uh, deeper experience in terms of getting information and understanding the field. Our faculty are expert, they're nationally recognized expert in the fields and you're going to get the benefit of cutting edge information that they understand and perhaps are even engaged in directly. Um, 
We also, for example, in the Psychology 101 course, we have what's called a research participation requirement where you'll be actively engaged in ongoing psychological research. And that's part of the course requirement, and that's an experience that you would not get in a high school AP course. Um, and so those things all need to be considered, and you should talk to your first-year advisor to make the decision about whether or not you want to enroll in the course again um, or take the AP credit. And one other point to consider is that the first semester in particular of college is a year, uh, a time of transition. And you're uh, adapting to a new environment, you're adapting to a heavier course load than you had in high school. And so if you take a course where you've already had AP, the AP version, it will be a bit of review and that might ease the transition into college and ensure that you're going to be successful in that course. Do you agree with those recommendations? I think those are excellent recommendations. I think it's a good way, I think thinking about not using AP credit to fulfill an introductory course, thinking about that is a good idea. Because again, the transition into the first semester, which will be the transition semester, and it's usually the most difficult semester, to get that refounding or reestablishment in a course with probably um, a lovely high grade um, is not a bad way to start um, a fall semester. And I'll just reiterate, the opportunity to work with, with faculty who are nationally and internationally known, who may be doing research that even if it's not required for the course as part of a lab session or being involved in experiments, it's nonetheless the opportunity to get involved in research um, starting out. And again, that can be really exciting and satisfying. So. Um, I, thinking seriously about whether or not to use those AP credits I think is a good idea. Yes. And um, I also want to remind you that even though we're talking a lot about major requirements, just to, so that you know what they are, you d do not need to feel rushed at all into declaring a major. In fact, you'll not be allowed to declare your major until the end of the first semester. And even at that point, um, there's no need. You may remain undeclared until the end of your sophomore year to give you plenty of time to explore and, and make your decision. Um, also, once you declare your major, it's really not difficult to add majors or change your major after that fact. Many students decide to change a major to a minor or to pick up an additional major or maybe completely change their mind entirely. And it's really not a difficult process at all. You don't have to apply to be accepted into a major. It's just a simple uh, process of having a major declaration form signed by the department representative. And so um, again, we showed you the slide of the department representatives and they're available um, now and, and throughout your time here at Case Western Reserve University to answer questions and give you more information as needed. So are there other questions, um, Professor Thompson, that you can think of that have come up in the past that students need to be aware of or that we can answer now? Um, I think another common question that uh, we have touched on and may have been addressed in some of the other videos that are available. Uh, we have many students who are interested in uh, going on to professional school um, in that especially in the health professions. And so again we just want to reassure students that social science majors are very compatible with pre-med requirements, um, pre-professional requirements. So they can easily accommodate the additional coursework that students will need to gain admission into those professional schools and, uh, and also complete the majors. That's good advice. I think it's also the case, as the sociology major indicates and some others as well, that um, professional schools are looking now for students who are more comprehensively prepared. Um, students who can go out in the world, who may have, again, some foreign language co uh, competency, who've worked with a variety of different ways of looking at and solving problems. And so a combination of different majors um, and not just a single track straightforward is often a good way to go. It's not the only way, but it's often a good way. Mm -hmm. um, and it has um, some very nice consequences often as well. Yeah. 
So I hope we've really helped you uh, feel comfortable with the process of registering for the fall semester courses. And just to recap, I once again want to reassure you that you'll have plenty of opportunity to get extra help to uh, adjust your schedule if necessary. Um, but chances are you'll do a great job in pulling together the coursework that you're going to start off in. And um, again, I want to just encourage you to not hesitate to ask questions. Professor Beckwith and I are looking forward to seeing you here on campus in August in person.